What's up guys? In this video, we're gonna be going over a super, super important topic that I'm really actually excited to talk about, which is when to know to not only hire, but also fire employees. This is like a component of my business that I feel like I really, really failed in. And I've learned so, so much going through this process of firing and hiring employees. I've made some major mistakes in, those, in that process. So I'm really, really excited to share back what I've learned on this channel, full transparency and honesty about this experience. A lot of what this video is going to entail is me actually quoting from this book that's called Traction traction if you see here it is a book that not only talks about the employee hiring and firing process but honestly how to structure your business entirely this book has completely changed the scope of how i think about doing business not only how i think about it but how i actually structure it whether you're just a single entrepreneur with your business right now looking to hire one person or you're already 50 employees deep Everybody should follow this traction process. A bunch of Fortune 500 companies follow this, as well as a lot of very successful e-commerce store owners that I personally know. It really is just mind blowing. It not only shows you, you know, how to do very basic things like setting up your goals, your mission, your vision, all that stuff, but also how you structure your business. So who does what inside of your business model and not only who does what, but then also how to keep every single person accountable within your organization. So everything just becomes very black and white. And so the whole point of this is that you grab traction inside your business and basically what happens in turn is your your business becomes like a machine where the effort and the money put in is guaranteeing something that comes out on the back end and so that's the goal for every single business is that it basically you know you put one dollar in and you get three dollars back but in order to make that process seamless following this traction process is really 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 important so i recommend everybody go into my description grab this book read this book again even if you are just starting out and you have no employees to date if you plan on growing your business and becoming more successful you're inevitably going to need help so start reading this now <laughs> while you're in your early stages and really get a grasp of what a business organization structure looks like you know in the five year and the 10 year and the 15 year plan you know when you're hopefully running a multi-million dollar six figure well really seven figure eight figure you know in whatever the case may be company so yeah we're going to hop into this video as well i'm going to give you real life examples from my personal business like <laughs> real life examples of where i messed up with this process when i first started out and how I'm going to now better that process when it comes to hiring and firing and really just qualifying people to come into my organization how I'm gonna do it better in the future based off these previous experiences that I've had that just basically did not end in my favor but that's just part of business all of this has been such a learning lesson for me so this is a really really important video I feel like I've learned a lot in the last Two years and I'm still very very in the beginning stages of my business but this is a huge key component of your organization is having employees and what I've experienced so far is that one of the most stressful things to date when it comes to actually running my business has become not so much anymore but before was just dealing with employees <laughs> it, it is it, it became one of the most anxiety driven parts about me coming and showing up to my office every single day and honestly it just shouldn't be that for your organization so hopefully by you watching this video you are going to learn a thing or two from some of my mistakes and then learn some more about how we're gonna do better in the future By the way guys, my name is Hannah Gardner and if you are new to the channel, make sure that you subscribe to the channel if you get any value out of this video because we talk about e-commerce, anything and everything with making money, selling products online. So if that is what you are into, please go ahead and subscribe to the channel and be sure that you're commenting down below if you have any questions about anything. All right, let's hop into the video. All right, so the first thing that we're gonna be talking about is when should you actually hire your first employee? This is a super scary 
like thing when you're first doing it because one, you know, it's really personal to bring someone from the outside in and not only are they seeing the whole inside of your organization, but you're sharing a lot of really confidential information with them. So that is totally normal to feel kind of scared and just like weary of bringing someone from the outside in. So some really, really important KPIs, key point or key performance indicators that it is actually time for you to go ahead and hire somebody. Again, this is all from this book, Traction, that I'm reading that I've already read and they explain it really, really well. So basically what Traction says is that if you have a standard work day, say from nine to five, and 100% of your day, because you only have so many hours in the day to work, so if 100% of your standard time of working is completely full to the max of you trying to get tasks done, and you actually get to a point where 120% effort is needed to complete all your tasks that you have to get done within a day, then that 20% of extra effort, or maybe even 20% of stuff that you don't even have enough time to get done in a day done, that's a really, really good KPI telling you that maybe you need to bring somebody in to actually help you with that new, that with that 20% of stuff that someone else can come in and do. So I was also reading in another business entrepreneur journal, some other key performance indicators that are telling you that you need help with running your business. And some of those actually include one, your products or the, your quality control suffering because you can't even get to, you know, product or quality control or even, you know, new product development because you are just so busy throughout the day that you can't even look at your products for e-commerce. Two, you don't have time to focus on more growth. So you are kind of at like a standstill or maybe you are growing and other parts of your business are suffering, but you personally can't, you don't even have enough time to search for more outlets or new outlets of growth because you can't even handle the traffic that's coming in as is. Three, you don't have time for HR duties. Nobody really loves doing HR duties. So like bookkeeping, any paperwork, you know, just anything that has to do with bookkeeping, backend, just standard stuff that you have to do for your business that are super, super important. Nobody loves to do them, but you just have zero time or you know, no mind capacity to actually do it. Number four, you're getting customer complaints. So you are not attending to your customers. You can't even do customer service because you personally just don't have time to get to it or it's taking you an exponential time to go back and answer your customer service. So in my business, for example, I answer all customer service inquiries within 24 hours of receipt. So, you know, that is a pretty good, for e-commerce, that's pretty good to be able to give your customer an answer within 24 hours. There's some companies I know that like give you a three to seven day period, which honestly is not a really good customer service, especially with things like Amazon and stuff like that that you're going against online where, you know, customers are expecting attention, you know, right then, now, when they're, when they're asking questions or if they are having issues with their order, whatever the case may be. And the last time is that you actually have zero time for any break or vacation and that includes even just taking off a weekend or a, an afternoon so if you literally have no time to take a break because as a business owner you know one of the big goals is that you're getting time freedom freedom to do whatever you want when you want because you own your business and if you don't have that obviously in the beginning no one really has that but if it's down the road and you're just slam packed all the time that just even taking an afternoon off, that could kind of be a, uh, a KPI that you need that amongst other things going wrong in your business that you need to you know, bring somebody else in from the outside. Now, when it comes to actually qualifying and looking for somebody to hire, where do you look? Well, <laughs> I'm gonna tell you what I did from my experience and what I did completely wrong and how I'm going to actually do this better in the future. So just, uh, just to give you some full disclosure, a few months ago, my business, my organization grew to six people. So me and five other people that I was managing. And today, to this point, we basically only have me and one other person and then a contractor. So we went from six people in total to now basically two people and a contractor. And that is all because of what I'm about to talk to you about when it comes to getting the right people in the right seats 
within your organization. So when I first started out, my hiring process was kind of just like, it just non-existent. We didn't really have a process. Even now it's something that I'm just learning about and developing and preparing for it in the future. So before I hired my first person, which is, you know, what a lot of people do is you just hire a friend or a family member and there's no really qualifying process because you just need help and that's fine. And that's kind of what I did. But later on, it definitely did bite me in the butt. If you are just in desperate need of some help, go ahead and do that. But if you want to do it a little bit more properly, I would recommend that you actually qualify <laughs> the person that you're bringing into your organization. So what does that mean? That means actually setting up a professional interview process. Um, and by the way, just a side note, uh, where I did find my first employee was from indeed.com. I put out a, basically a, uh, like a, a flyer or something. You put out an ad that you're, you know, help wanted and you're actually in there putting all the qualifiers that you need them to do for you. So indeed.com is a good one. A lot of people use Upwork for virtual assistants to get some, you know, help from people over the seas overseas so Upwork's a really good place to find people in places like the Philippines or Thailand to come in and work for you because the wages there are a lot cheaper. I did work with a virtual assistant before and I'll make a whole video on how to find a really good virtual assistant but you can find really really good qualified people to work for you virtually so Upwork indeed if you're looking for someone to actually come into your office or your warehouse to work for you. Upwork if you're looking for a virtual assistant so somebody to do your customer service, answer emails, take wholesale orders, stuff like that. It's really good for a virtual assistant because even though you in the US might be paying less, over there you're actually paying a really good wage for what they make overseas. So it kind of works out in both people's favor. Going back to that qualifying process, I would say that you want to interview them and make sure that they really align with your company's core values. This is something that the book talks about a lot. When you go to work at a restaurant or you go to work at anywhere corporate, you, there's usually some type of culture. And for you owning your business and just starting out, you need to define what that culture is and what your core values are for your business. So for example, in the book, they give an example of some core values of a company and I'll read them to you now. One, be humbly confident, grow or die. Three, help first. Four, do the right thing. Five, do what you say. So those are, and those are some examples of a company's core value. For me, one thing was not taking no for an answer or not, I don't remember exactly how I worded it, I have to look at my chart, but it's basically like, you know, you're here to do higher level thinking, so solve problems, problem solving approach, sorry. It's a problem solving approach. So just because you don't understand something, that doesn't mean you just stop, right? You, you figure out what it is that you need to figure out to solve the problem. So that's an example of a company core value. So you really, really wanna define that. Being, being accountable could be another one. So showing up on time, right? Like those are values, things that, you know, companies really, really are looking for when they have somebody in their organization. So when you're looking and qualifying these people, you wanna make sure that they align with your company's core values, right? So going back to my example with the problem solving approach, I would use a qualifier question like, tell me about a time where you experienced a problem and what lengths you went to overcome that problem, right? <laughs> Where what I did before was just hired the first person that said yes to me. And while she was good in the beginning, as time progressed, the position just really kind of outgrew her. Whereas if I really found somebody that aligned with, you know, not only my core values, but the vision of where I wanted my company to go, which at the time I did not have defined at all. <laughs> I was just scraping for help. Um, where I wish I had defined my vision and my core values of my company and you know got somebody that aligned with not only gets the culture and understands the culture but sees the vision of where we're actually heading so then when that growth of the company did happen it didn't just completely break the relationship um, of you know where we were at so using qualifier questions actually having a formal interview process I would say are two things that I wish I would have done, as well as when they actually were coming on to get hired, I would have an employee contract. And in this employee contract, I would make it very black and white. 
this is what you're doing. You're consenting that you are going to fulfill this role with the best of your ability, aligning with our company's core values, listing the core values in the contract, as well as making sure that they're consenting to the vision and consenting that they will be a malleable employee. So as the company grows and changes, the person is consenting to grow and change with the company and that they're actually okay with that change because you want somebody, especially with a startup, you know, your company from year one to year three can be a completely different company because you're a startup and things are not set in stone yet. Things are very malleable, always changing. So you want to make sure that that person is okay with that and they're, they know that and have that expectation up front. So setting those expectations in the beginning is so, so important. It's setting expectations was another thing that I did not do. So in my company, there was no expectation of coming on time, not being on your phone, changing with the company as the company is growing. Those were, no, none of that was put into a contract, more or less disclosed to the people that I first hired when I was first starting out. So all those things are super, super important to put them into the contract. So if a problem does arise, hey, you signed this contract, you said that you were going to grow and change with the company. You said that you would show up on time. You said that you are not gonna be on your phone for four hours out of the seven hours that you're here, but you're doing that, so I'm confused. So setting those expectations, putting those ground rules in place are super, super important because you're investing into these people. You're just starting out. Money may not be as affluent because you're a startup. So you want to make sure that they are actually providing real value and solving real problems for your business. You know, not just in the first month that they're with you, but you know, and be with you for years to come. So. That's what I would have done differently in the hiring process. And by the time that I implemented the, these contracts, I had already hired you know, the people that are no longer with me now. And so it's kind of like setting the bar super, super low when they're first starting out. And then all of a sudden I'm reading this book and now I'm throwing rules and like regulations on them and giving them contracts and trying to actually make my business like a business. And now all of a sudden it's like, all it really does, to be honest, at the end of the day, is it makes your bar set super low, and then when you actually need you know, better performance, better this, better that, higher level thinking there, better work here, showing up on time, all it really does is just make them super, super entitled. And, <laughs> and I like to give this example. The first girl I hired, I was always so afraid of like them not liking me or just not being like the cool boss. And again, for instance, like I was saying before, I had one girl that showed up late every single day for a year. And then the one day that I needed her to stay late because we were running behind, she gave me this crazy attitude because I needed her to stay 30 minutes late. And that entitlement only came because I said that expectation so low, right? So it's like, in my mind, I'm like, really? Like you showed up late every single day for the last year. And now the one day I need you to stay later, you're not gonna help me out. <laughs> and that again, that's all entitlement because I never put the groundwork. I never set the floor high. I never set the bar high. I was always kind of just like, yeah, I'm the cool boss. I'm your friend. At the end of the day, all I really did was just hire unqualified people to be inside my organization and got <laughs> taken advantage of because I didn't do, I didn't set things up properly. And again, that's my fault. <laughs> and, that, and it's all part of the learning experience of having employees for the first time. So learn from my mistakes. So now we're going to look at when you should know that you actually need to go ahead and fire somebody. Now, this is super, super uncomfortable. For me, again, was hire, like not only employee management, but then firing was so uncomfortable for me. Like I literally would, this stuff would keep me awake at night. And you should just never have a relationship with your business like that, more or less, like not even feel comfortable to show up to your office space because you know the quality of work they're putting out is just doesn't meet your expectation, but you're just too afraid to say anything. And this just comes with getting a backbone, just really seeing from a greater picture how it's hurting your organization. Because at the end of the day, it's not about you and your relationship with your employee. 
you're in that room working together for a business. So it's not about me, it's not about Hannah, it's about the organization, right? So it goes beyond a friendship, it goes beyond, I'm afraid I'm gonna hurt her feelings or his feelings, whatever the case may be. You're running a business, so you're doing it on behalf of a greater thing, right? So that was something that was really, really hard for me to overcome. So when it came to actually firing somebody, there's a few KPIs that are going to tell you whether or not this person is a good fit for your organization. So I'm gonna put in here actually this chart. This is called a people analyzer. This is something again that's inside traction and it makes everything black and white. Like it makes it so easy to vet out a good employee from a bad employee. So the first thing in the chart, as you'll see, is on the top is your company's core values. And in the chart, you're gonna fill out a plus or a minus or a plus or minus. Now, it's okay to have one or two plus or minuses on your core values, but if they have a minus, it's already a no. So that's a kind of like a KPI that know, that's telling you that this person is probably not a good person. Now as to if they're not a good person for your organization at all, or they're just not maybe in the right position, we're gonna talk about that in a second, but let's just go back to that. So you basically wanna have all pluses. This is something that you can do every quarter when you're analyzing your staff. And even yes, even if it's just one person that you have, it's really good to start practicing this now because if you plan on growing, you're probably gonna have more people in the future. So start practicing this now. So essentially, yes, you just wanna have, every, you wanna make sure that for the most part, it's pluses across the board. You can have a few, one or two, maybe three plus minuses, but as far as having a minus there, then you need to look, go in and evaluate is this person just not in the right position or is they're just not supposed to be in this organization at all? So again, at the top, you'll see that they have the your company's core values. And then on the last three columns, you're gonna see a GWC. Now in traction, they call this, get it, want it, and have the capacity to do it. So you wanna make sure that all these rows have three pluses under those columns as well. Now, what does that actually mean? So get it. Do they get the organization? Do they get what they're meant to be there for? Do they get the role that they're playing? And you'd be surprised that <laughs> sometimes you find that your person really just doesn't get what the job is or what they're supposed to be doing every day. They just don't get it. And that's a huge problem, but hopefully they do. Now, the second column is W, which is wanted. So does the person want what the work that they're getting? Do they want it? Do they see the vision of your company? Do they go in and they do their job motivated to get things done and they're getting it done on time, right? So for, for instance, <laughs> one thing that's really, really important that I learn is that when you find somebody that's really, really good and wants it, they see the vision, they see the growth, you're probably a smaller company, they wanna grow with your company. What you'll find is that when you find somebody really good, you don't have to give incentives or bonuses or you know incentivize better behavior, they just do it, right? When somebody really wants it and they want to be there, they'll do whatever you want and they'll do it really, really well. And not only will they do it well, but they will also try to contribute and solve problems to make these processes and systems that they're doing actually more efficient. And that's when you know somebody really wants it and they want to be there and they're not just treating it as like a job or a paycheck. And yes, it may take quite a few people to find that person that really wants it. One thing that I tried to do um, with one of my girls was, you know, I was trying to incentivize and provide bonuses and commissions and stuff like that, only to realize that maybe that person is, it's, they're either not supposed to be in my organization or they're in the wrong seat. So they're that role where I'm trying to incentivize to get more work out of them, they just don't want it. They just didn't want to do the work. <laughs> and the fact that I even had to go to the extent of providing that those incentives of bonuses and commission, like I said, if someone really wants it, you don't have to provide bonuses and commissions and bring this person in and get this percentage of sales back because the person's gonna do it regardless if the commission is there or not because they really just want to be there and want to do it. So that's huge. And the last thing is do they have the capacity to do it? So do they have the mental, emotional, and physical capacity to actually complete the job that you have set in front of them? So 
<laughs> for instance, this is a really tough situation if say the person suffers severely from a mental illness or a physical something where they can't complete the job or they have to the extent of you know dealing with some home family problems or whatever it is it's really really hard to it's hard but if the business is going to suffer because they don't have the capacity to do it whether they can't do it at all or they just can't do it for that time then you're going to have to make that choice and that call of maybe they're not good for the organization or maybe at least not at this time because again it's not about you and your relationship with your employee it's about a greater picture which is your company that you're trying to grow so that is really really huge you could have somebody that gets it and wants it but doesn't have the capacity to do it or they could get it have the capacity to do it but they don't want it which was the case with me with what I saw. They got what they were supposed to be doing. They had full capacity to do what they were doing, but when it came to wanting it and seeing the vision, I shouldn't have had to provide incentives to give them for the task. They should have just did it, right? So again, this whole formula, the people analyzer, this is something that you can do monthly, you can do quarterly, and it really just makes it black and white. <laughs> like, are the people in your organization supposed to be there? Now, the next part of this is two things that this book makes really, really seamless is not only do you have this people analyzer, but does the person that is in your organization, are, is it the right person in the right seat or is it the wrong person in the right seat? So that's the next thing to evaluate, evaluate after you go through that people analyzer. So if the person is getting some negative marks, right? Does that mean that they're not right for your organization at all, or they're just maybe in the wrong position? So the right person in the wrong seat would be an example of, say, somebody that has full capacity to do a job really well, and you thought promoting them was actually going to help them into a higher role and to you know, take on new management positions, but actually what it did was it hurt them because they were not qualified for that bigger role. And they are actually really, really good at what they were doing because what they were doing before was really working really, really well and efficiently. So it could be the right person and you just put them in the wrong seat. Or another example would be maybe they have outgrown their position. So they're wanting to do more, but the position is constricting them to going to higher level management, solving higher level problems, and maybe problems that you personally don't even know how to solve. So you're going, it's hard for you to give up maybe that part of your business, but that person could be really, really qualified to do that. So it could be the right person, just they're in too small of a position. Now on the verse side of that, it could be the wrong person in the right seat. So. Like my example before, my person, they you know, they got it, they had the capacity to do it, but they didn't want it. So that is a personality problem. That's not something that I can fix. I can't make you want to do your job. I can't make you motivated to be here, right? So that could be somebody that just doesn't want it, but they have full capability and they understand what they're supposed to do. So that could be the wrong person in the right seat, right? So it could be a really, really great opportunity for them to grow, but they just don't want to do it. It could also be somebody that just, you know, it's the, it could be the right, the wrong person because they don't align with your core values. So if they have any minuses on your core value side, it's just again, if they don't align, they don't show up on time. Maybe they do their job and they do it, they get what they have done, they, they do it well, but they don't show up on time. They're not accountable. They don't pick up the phone. They don't align with your core values of the culture and your company. So again, that could be the wrong person in the right seat, in which case you know that maybe they're not supposed to be in your organization. All of these things have really, really helped me create a formula of what I'm going to look for in the future and how I'm really going to not only vet people, but when I will, I'll know very clearly when they have overstayed their welcome inside my business. Because again, at the end of the day, it's about the business. And so if they're hurting your business or they're preventing you from doing your job well as a owner, then that's really at the end of the day, it's hurting your organization, it's hurting your growth.
One thing that the book does recommend is that you use something called a three strike rule. So again, in that first strike, remember you gave them the employee contract, everything is black and white, why they're there, what they're supposed to be doing, what the expectations are. <laughs> now, if they start say something's going wrong in their performance, the three strike rule is basically what it says is that you go and address the problem and you give them 30 days to fix it. Now, if 30 days go by and the problem is still not fixed, the book says that you give them a second strike where you sit down, talk to them about the problem again, address the problem, how you're gonna solve it, and give them another 30 days. Now, if in that next 30 days, the problem is still not being solved, at that point, you know if they get it, they have the capacity to do it, and they don't want it, that means that they are not right for your organization and you're gonna have to go ahead and fire them. And so the book does this in 30 day increments in a three strike process. You can obviously, if the first 30 days goes by and they didn't even attempt to do what you just talked about and how you talked about solving that problem or that behavior, um, if they had made no effort to do that, then you may know that you actually need to go ahead and fire them within that first strike. But yeah, that is basically how the book breaks down how you actually go about that process. And again, because of those employee contracts, it's very black and white. All right guys, that concludes pretty much everything I've learned so far about the firing, you know, the qualifying and the hiring process of new employees in your organization. It is a super scary and can be very stressful at times, but hopefully some of this content in this video helped you and just really not make some of the mistakes that I made <laughs> in the future. As you know, I grow, I only can learn from my mistakes and do better. So that's all part of this channel. So if you did get any value out of this video, please do go ahead and subscribe to the channel, like, comment, any questions, concerns down below. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video.